Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about the topic resistance. Assume this as a conductor. In a conductor, we have two types of charges, positive and negative. Positive ions are fixed at one place, so we call them as lattice ions. Lattice ions. It is the negative ions which keeps moving. So this movement of negative ions is what we call as current. When negative ions are in motion, they come to halt. They stop due to the presence of positive ions in the middle. So this obstruction to the flow of electrons is called resistance. And the material, the material which offers the resistance is called resistor. The units of resistance is ohms. Now we'll discuss about the factors affecting resistance. There are four factors which affect resistance. Temperature and resistance. Second one is nature of material and resistance. Third one is length of the material and resistance. Fourth one is area of cross section and resistance. So let us start with the temperature and resistance. Make a circuit as shown. Measure the value of resistance of this bulb in an open circuit. Then close the circuit and measure the resistance again by using a device called as multimeter. Multimeter is a device which measures the resistance. The difference what you notice is the value of resistance in the second instance is more, is more when compared to the first one. The reason for this increase in the resistance is when the current flows through the circuit, you can see the circuit is closed here. When the current flows through the circuit, the bulb gets heated. And, the in and this increase in the temperature of the filament or in the bulb is responsible for increase in the resistance. So we can conclude that there is a relation between temperature and resistance. When temperature increases, resistance also increases or vice versa is when temperature decreases, resistance also decreases. Coming to the next factor that is nature of material and resistance. Collect different metal rods, copper, aluminium, iron, etc. of same length and same cross-sectional area. So we have to collect different metal rods and we have to make a circuit as shown. You can see this is the conducting wire, battery, ammeter and a switch which is open now and P and Q are the two open terminals of a circuit. So one of the metal rod which we collected, either copper or aluminium, attached between the two free terminals that is P and Q. After keeping here, switch on the circuit. Switch on the circuit and measure the current value using ammeter. Ammeter is a device which measures the current. Repeat this. Repeat this. Now you can take out this copper rod and in place of copper you can place some other metal, aluminium or iron. Repeat this with different metal rods. Connect between P and Q. Switch on the circuit. Measure the value of current using an ammeter and note down the corresponding values in your notebook. And the, the, what you notice is the value of current is different for different metal rods. That is, in some metals, current flow is more and some metals will allow the less current to flow through it. So we can say that resistance and current are inversely proportional. If the resistance offered by the metal is more, the current flow will be less and if the resistance offered by the metal is less, then the current flow through that metal will be more. So in this way, resistance depends on the nature of the material. Now coming to the third factor, that is length of the conductor and resistance. Resistance denoted with the letter R. Now, in this case, we have to collect iron spokes of different lengths say 15 centimeter, 10 centimeter, 5 centimeter with same cross-sectional area. Different lengths but same cross-sectional area. Now, we have to uh, make a circuit same as we have done for the factor 2. PEQ, two open terminals, battery, ammeter, device for measuring current and a switch. 
Now from this iron spokes, we can take one of it, for example if we take 15 centimeter, we have to place it between P and Q, switch on the circuit and measure the value of the current. In the same way, repeat this with different iron spokes, 10 centimeter, 5 centimeter, keep it here, switch on the circuit, measure the value of current, note down the corresponding values. What you'll notice is the value of current decreases with increase in the length. That means if length of the iron spoke is more, current flow will be less. So by this we can say that if length is more, resistance offered is more. So that is the reason why current is flowing less. And if length is less, current flow will be more. So resistance offered by the iron spoke will be less. So in this way, we can uh, conclude that resistance is directly proportional to length. More the length, more is the resistance offered. Less the length, res less is the resistance offered. Now let us discuss the fourth factor, that is area of cross section and resistance. Here you have to collect different iron rods with different areas but same length. So here we have different cross sectional areas but the length is same. In the previous one we were having different lengths but same cross sectional area, here the opposite. Okay. The second point is same as we have done with the other two factors like uh, take one of the iron rod, fix it between P and Q, switch on the circuit and measure the value of current using an ammeter. Then replace it with the area which is uh, iron rod which is, ha which is having a small area, place it between P and Q, switch on, measure the value using an ammeter. Now the, the difference what you notice is more the bigger the area current flow will be current flow will be more and resistance offered will be less. So if resistance offered is less more current flows. Then for the smaller area we can write it as smaller the area current flow will be less so resistance offered is more. So we can conclude that resistance and area are inversely proportional, are inversely proportional to area. Less area, more resistance. You can see here less area, resistance offered is more. Now let us take this one as equation 2 and this as equation 1. Now, if we substitute or you can say uh, from equation 1 and 2, from equation 1 and 2, we can write R proportional to L by A. To remove this proportionality sign, I will take a constant that is rho into this thing is same. L by A. This R you know it's a resistance, L is length of the material and A is the area of cross section where this rho is nothing but we call it as specific resistance or resistivity. Specific resistance or there is one more name called as resistivity. Now if you take resistivity or specific resistance to one side and the remaining things to the other side that is rho is equals to A was in denominator if it goes to the other side it comes in numerator so R into A by L L was in numerator so it went to the other side denominator now uh, if you write the units for this specific resistance let us write the units specific resistance rho is equals to Resistance unit, we have discussed earlier, it's ohms. So let me write ohm here. Into area unit is meter square. Why meter square? Because area is equals to length into breadth. Length is measured in meters, breadth also measured in meter. So meter into meter will be meter square. That is the reason in place of A we are writing meter square by length unit is meter. 
So now you can see meter and this uh, square one gets cancelled and then we'll be having like rho is equals to ohm into meter. We can keep ohm into sine or just we can uh, write it as ohm meter. So this is the unit, ohm meter is the unit for specific res resistance. Now this reciprocal of specific resistance is what we call as conductivity denoted with omega. Conductivity. So reciprocal of resistance is conductivity. The material with low resistivity, material with low resistivity are good conductors. Example, copper metals, they are used for making the electric wires. And the metal tungsten, which is denoted with letter W, the metal tungsten has the high resistivity value which is used for making filament of electric bulb and it has high resistivity value and melting point that is 3422 degrees Celsius. By this we end our topic. I hope you all understood this. <laughs>